Hello everyone and welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live interactive session. I am here to educate you and to inform you on the proper use of the Hawkeye tools on the live edge of the market. Today is Ninja Trader Day. I'll be showing and demonstrating all the Hawkeye tools on the Ninja Trader 8 platform. If you do have any questions or comments, over on the right hand side of your go to webinar control panel is your questions pane. Please enter your question or comment there and I'll be glad to get to them in the order that they are received. If you have a question about any other platform other than NinjaTrader, uh, please hold your questions to the end of today's presentation and I'll be glad to uh, hang around and answer those questions for you. Everything I show you and demonstrate today should be applicable to any of the platforms that we use, which are TradeStation, MetaTrader 4, and TradingView, along with NinjaTrader. But there are some specific things that have to be set up and how to uh, use the indicator on that platform. So that's why I dedicate a whole session to each platform, because it's sometimes helpful that you can see it on the platform that you're actually using. It's not a requirement, because if you're following Hawkeye and if you know and understand how to interpret volume and price, it really doesn't matter what platform you're using or where you get your data. Uh, what matters is uh, how you interpret it. And that's what I'm here to help you to do. I want to make sure that you understand and know that we are here for educational purposes only, that Hawkeye Traders is not a registered trading advisor. So we cannot give you specific trading advice, but what we can do is teach you and train you on the proper use of Hawkeye and how to use it in live markets. Right? Like any other market, if you're trading with futures, stocks, forex, cryptocurrencies, or options, there is a large potential for reward in trading these markets, but there's also a large potential for risk. You must be aware of the risks involved when you trade in these markets and be willing to accept them if you're going to start investing in any of these markets. So please use common sense when you trade and don't trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. The past performance of any trading system or what we show today is not indicative of any future results. So get advice from a competent financial advisor before you start to invest your money in these markets. Never trade in a live trading account with real money until you have first proven that you can consistently and profitably trade a simulated account. Only then can you start trading and taking on the mindset because the mind is 90% of the trader's game. And if your mind's all messed up, if you think that uh, you can trade in, in a live market with real money, then uh, then you're not going to do very well. So make sure that you're, you understand that you can execute your trading plan consistently and profitably using the exact same rules in a simulated account. If you're treating a simulated account exactly like you would treat a live account, that's going to help you mentally to prepare and execute your trading plan. Okay. All right. Um, I've got a daily, a weekly, and a monthly setup of, for equity stocks uh, on my Ninja platform. I've got a 60-minute down here looking at... Uh, uh, EA just uh, gave out their uh, earnings yesterday, and they uh, did phenomenally well. So they uh, spiked up quite quite nicely, and uh, they're trading up this morning, 10, almost 103.60, 104. So you can see they they closed about 102. So they're going to pop up just a little bit with a nice little gap, uh, but it'll be up at the top of the range. So we'll see where that uh, that trades out, but I expect it to continue on out today. So just looking at the historical data leading up to this. I always like and, and prefer to trade daily, weekly, monthly charts on a longer term perspective. Looking from the weekly chart, you can see a nice uh, volume signal that there was a, a peak and an expected downtrend coming based upon our volume signal. So looking at, let me draw a little uh, arrow there, looking at this line right there, okay? then uh, I expect to see for at least a month or three uh, for that direction of that price to be going back down again. And we got uh, one, two, three, four, five months of downward pressure and five months of selling pressure on this instrument. Then you can see at the end of that that there was a, an engulfing bar, there was neutral volume showing that the buyers were starting to come back in, but the uh, 
it was equal to the sellers in this market, and that's why it was painted white. Okay, the price went right down to the Hawkeye stop level, just triggered the downtrend, and it started to go into a monthly downtrend. But now we can st we're starting to see that based upon the rally that we saw from the January, okay, this this January month closed bullish and above the downtrend dot. So this tells us we're in a trend pause at the moment, but it is still an active downtrend. The weekly is giving us the same information, just in a, a more detailed view. We're starting to see that the Hawkeye trend dots went white from the uptrend, and you can see price came right down to the Hawkeye stop level, which is a high uh, support resistance value. So if you have flat Hawkeye stops across your screen, you can treat that as a automatic trailing support resistance area. So um, it has a, a pretty high probability that it will pause or stop at that area. If it triggers, in this case it did right here, when it triggers past the stop value, then the uh, the excursion causes the trend to be to change to a downtrend. Notice that the trend dots themselves didn't change to a white because the average true range and the amount of change from this point was not enough to trigger that trend dot to change. We're looking at stochastics and we're also looking at uh, the volume associated with that. It was not enough to cause the trend dots to change to red, but, it, but at this point it was. So once we saw enough volume and momentum coming in to support that down move, that's when the trend dot changed and we got confirming volume pushing that back down all the way to the uh, 75 or below price. Okay, so understanding how volume and price are working together, the trend dot, the Hawkeye trend dot is showing you that level of resistance. So as price broke down, consolidated and started to break again, it started to follow this Hawkeye trend to the uh, downside. Notice that when price corrected, it came right up to the trend dots, paused, and then came back down and continued. Came up, paused, and came back down and continued. And it wasn't until we got a big push up with buying volume that closed past the trend dot that we started to see a steady stream of accumulation volume coming in. And we saw that the closes were greater than the trends and the trend dots started to roll and come right back up again. Okay, so now we're starting to see a build of buying pressure coming back into this. And this build of buying pressure um, started back on the first week of January. So bullishness started coming in right when the rest of the market started to come right back up again. And then let's take this same scenario and move it back up into a daily chart. The daily chart, I have down here a road kill, a higher time frame heat map, and a second road kill in addition to my volume and heat map. Okay, the function of the road kill is to show me what the higher time frames are doing at the same time as the faster time frame that I'm trading. So if I were to format this, then I can see that that road kill is set up as a two day. So I'm looking at a two day setup of my trend against a one day setup. My higher time frame heat map is also set up as a two day. And my road kill, my second road kill, it's this one here, I have it set up as a one week. So I'm looking at a one day, two day, one week setup based upon these indicators. So that same run up into the, the previous highs, which we saw started to come in with weak uh, volume on the weekly. Remember, the weekly didn't change until right about here. Notice the trend dot. See, the trend dot is white. So the weekly was showing us a white trend all the way to this point right here. And it was at that point that we got a signal, which is called a roadkill, that identifies when the trend of the longer time frame came into alignment with the trend of the shorter time frame. And that signal popped in and told us that this is the highest probability uh, for a continuation of that trend.
Okay, so it's the lowest risk and the highest probability for entry. Also, you can see back here on the second time frame, which is the two day, we got the alignment signal right here at the first of the trend. But notice that the second time frame did not give us the ability to get into that because the volume was still green. It wasn't until right here where we saw an alignment where the volume was red, the direction of the second time frame was red, and the first time frame was good. So right here was a good chance to get back in off of the initial signal. But that initial signal, if we understand consolidation and congestion rules, we see that we are trading within congestion. So we cannot enter at that point because we're trading inside of congestion. We need to see a break of congestion in order to confirm that. And we didn't get that break until right here where price broke out. We got the complete bar open, high, low, and close outside of our congestion range. We have it on confirming volume and we have a confirming signal. So this right here is the ideal time to start entering in and to try taking positions on that. And if you had missed that one, the next signal would have been the signal that we had gotten right here, the confirming signal across all time frames. So either way, you would have gotten a, a confirming signal here and a confirming signal here to take that trade. Since it's a daily chart, you'll be entering into that trade. You can see price came up to the trend dots, paused, and started continuing back down, came up to the trend dots, paused, continued down, and came up. This time it closed above the trend dots, so we have entered into a, another congestion period. You can see that the uh, the break of congestion didn't come until right here, the first break. So that continued the trend down, and then here's another congestion. You can see that we've entered into congestion, and now we see a break to the upside out of congestion, which confirms an uptrend. And you can also see that at the same time the trend dot went green. And it was one more bar later that we got an actual confirming long signal from both of our two-day and four-day charts. And so this would a, be a confirming re-entry to an opposite directional trade based upon the volume signature and the trend that we got in. Very clear and easy to read. Now this, this you still, still would be in at this point because your stops here, but notice that the... Uh, Gap, big gap down was the institution sitting there trying to find liquidity to push this stock up. Somebody knew something somewhere that they were going to be pumping out new and fresh earnings this week. So one week prior to that, there was a, a big push down to try to get liquidity and to try to find stops. And that's exactly what happened. Price closed down below our stop would have stopped us out. And then price continued back down. But if you're understanding and you're seeing where the support and resistance levels are, then you can see that this is the area where your stop really should be. And uh, if that's the area of the stop, then you can see the liquidity hunt is trying to, to knock out those that are following the trend. So we still would have been stopped out following our trend, uh, but the uh, smart money was sitting here trying to get into that trade and to uh, get us on the opposite side. So the next bar pushes right back up and closes back out above that again. So it pushes it back into an uptrend. But right now, um, we're, that's where we're kind of held at right now. So we're still held in this. We've got a big earnings uh, release uh, this morning, and uh, it's trading at 104.16 right now. I don't know why this isn't updating. Because uh, you can see right here, uh, 104.55 is the current price, but this isn't. Uh... Let me make sure that it's. Updating. Yeah, I don't know why that's not updating. It is daily data, uh, but it still should be giving me a live update on the on the feed there. There we go. Wow, that's almost like it's a 15-minute delay. Hmm. I need to check that out. Any questions so far? I've just been rambling along. 
I'm assuming that everyone can hear me okay. Good. Thank you, TJ. All right. Uh, any questions on equities, uh, longer term position type trades using the Hawkeye tools? I'll go and start analyzing some of uh, the other markets. Volume, of course, is the most important part of this analysis. So you can see volume leads the direction of that trade considerably, not only to the long side, but to the short side as well. Let's take a look at that from a volume only perspective. All right, let's pick another instrument. Uh, Boeing Aerospace, my favorite. All right, um, what I like about this is that it, it just helps me to see and, and to know that I'm looking for a direction in the market. And what volume does is it pushes me into that specific direction. Okay, so for example, on the monthly chart, notice what uh, is on the chart. Let me identify that right here, right there. See that? All right, this is identifying another liquidity hunt, but it's showing that buyers are very attracted to this price level. And as price pushes back down, not only sell, are sellers not able to compete, but buyers are overwhelmingly uh, aggressive in taking positions in this instrument at that price. And then you can see that uh, at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months later, the price then started to roll back up. So they're not in any rush to get to where they're wanting to go. They know where they want to go. They got the, uh, the attractive levels at that point, and then the price started to rally from there. Okay, You can see a nice steady stream of volume buying activity. Then we started to see sellers come in and do the exact same thing right here. All right, big push up first set with selling activity, but price just came into a, a, a range. When Once we started to see these, these markers here, we're, we're starting to expect price to push back down again. And that's exactly what it did here. Three days in a row, we got a nice volume uh, trying to push this down. But what did we see? What was price action telling us? Price action was telling us that it did not want to continue to go down because the closes of the price bar were always either in the middle or in the upper part of those price bars. They were not in the lower part or closing outside of the congestion range. So they were false breakouts showing price was failing to break short. That gives us a very bullish signal that this is about to take off because buyers are starting to rally. We're starting to see signals that buyers are coming in, but they're not heavy enough and they're not strong enough to push this market down. And we see that through the price action and the resulting return of buyers into this market gave a very responsive price bar, which not only opened toward the low, but closed toward the high. That is a strong price bar. Okay. That's confirming this engulfing bar confirms that this is a price failure to rotate and for the continuing bullish move that results. So all I'm doing is interpreting this from volume and price and looking at the overall direction. Now, if you were to trade that this trend based upon your daily chart, then you can see the same thing, but in a little bit more detail. Okay, here is a big push down with volume. You have sellers trying to come back in, but very, very weak. And once buying comes back in, see how responsive the buying is. Then when the sellers start to come back in, notice that as price starts to go down, that the volume goes down. Then once you saw volume starting to go up, this was the first and only sign that I saw that we have increasing volume and decreasing price. So this looks like it has a potential uh, to go to the downside. However, when I saw price come back down to the low of this bar and 
decreasing with volume. See that? This, this push down, which was a strong bar, had below average volume. That tells me that's weak. And it tells me that this is starting to fail. So when we see the very next bar push down and close high with red volume, that almost guarantees, that's almost as bullish of a signal as you can get. You have an engulfing bar that closes high, but the volume is still trying to sell. So that means there's a large amount of buyers trying to come into this market. And notice the decline continue in the selling volume. And then we start to see the buyers taking over. And the pressure from the buyers are starting to come in, even with a big push down. The amount of buyers start, kept increasing, and that bar was still painted green because the, the amount of buyers and the buying pressure on that price bar was, was huge, above average. And you see a nice steady stream of buying coming back in, very responsive price action continuing, even with a slightly declining volume, but a very nice uh, level of volume supporting that move. And then again, a big push up and continued bullishness into new highs. So that's the idea that you're looking for. You're trying to see and understand the relationship between volume and price. What's it trying to tell you? And as a Hawkeye trader, you understand that relationship. And the tools then tell you when is a safe time to enter. I can enter now because I'm confident that the direction of the market has already been in place. And I understand that as a trader. And I'm going to take that trade. So looking at the exact same setup with the Hawkeye tools, other than volume, then you can see that exact same setup that we were looking for failed. And we got a signal to enter right here. Hawkeye aligned and gave us a, an initial entry point that could have gotten us in and gotten us to a good profit level. What responsive is, is that means that you see the volume starting to come in and price moving in the direction of the volume. If volume is not responsive, then you can see volume coming in and see, notice volume is not going anywhere. Price is not is stagnant. Even with increasing volume, price is still stagnant. But here, the price is rising as volume comes in. So that's responsive buying. The price is responding to the presence of buyers in the market. Here, price was not responding to the presence of sellers in the market. Okay. That's uh, basic. That's a good question, TJ. This does not only work on longer time frames. Um, this is a good example to show you the the foundation of Hawkeye was built to look at longer time frames uh, because that's where uh, most of the, the trades were taking place. Most of the money that's made in the markets are going to be made on the longer time frames. But if you're a shorter time frame scalp trader or if you're a swing trader, then the Hawkeye tools are not limited to the time frame that you use. So let's look at a, a different time frame and a different market. Um, Marcel wanted to look at the S&P futures. So uh, let me look down into my intraday futures and I'll pull up an S&P. Uh, this is the NASDAQ. So let me click on the futures contract. This is the S&P futures contract. I'm trading a three minute. I have a six minute and a 12 minute chart. You can use five, 10, 15. You can use five, 15, 30. Um, any time frame that is really harmonic to the um, date base time frame that you're using would be great. Why do I use three minute? Um, it's off the beaten path. A lot of traders will trade off five minutes. Um, so I like to trade a little bit faster just to see um, how it's coming in. All right, um, this morning uh, you can see pre-market and coming up into this that the price was bullish and it was trending up. Uh, you got a, 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 a liquidity hunt that came right back down to the previous low, but it was 
buying volume coming in. So you can see that this is just institutions sitting there trying to get better prices uh, than where they currently were before they knew there was going to be a push up and a rally for the morning. So this again becomes the eighth week in a row where prices uh, continue to rise and, and go up and close greater than previous. So it's a, it's a big big push into an existing rally that's already coming into place. Um, VK, uh, what time frame of the fat boy am I using? Okay, right now this is a three minute fat boy. I like to keep my fat boy, if I look at the data series, and you can see that I'm, I'm trading off of a three minute. Uh, and the inst indicator itself must also be set to a three minute. A lot of times I like to set it to a one minute for the first 45 minutes of the day and then three minutes for the remainder of the day. That's because usually the first 45 minutes price set is coming in, volume is really increasing and we're starting to see a lot of, of push uh, through volume. Uh, but um, if you want to just leave it and, and forget it, then I recommend a three minute time frame because it gives you a really good flow of the correlation of the markets. And so what the fat boy shows me is um, the relationship between all of the different futures markets. So here I'm looking at the correlation of how well they are moving in together. And I'm also looking at the relative strength of one. So you can consider this like a stochastic where you're looking at uh, overbought and down here below the red oversold. And you and it also gives you a degree of correlation as well. So right now you can see that the red, which is the S&P 500, is overbought and is starting to roll over, trend down. The Dow Jones uh, looks like gold is also uh, overbought and they are still trending up. Uh, the Nasdaq and crude oil seem to be rolling over at fair value. And uh, the, the Russell um, seems like it's uh, not really responding to the market right now. It, the order is not important. So if you look at the order of the instruments that you're trading, it does not matter the order that they're put in. You just need to have uh, an understanding of which symbol that you put in at that location and then down here you can define the color codes for them symbol one through symbol six you can define the colors for each one of those symbols and you can see here symbol one through six are defined there so that way it's really easy for you to see the colors and to uh, correlate those to what you're trading i always use the same color so i always know what my color scheme is and you can change them to be any format that you like so if you show and uh, display the data, see the data box there, then the data box will give you the information, see the symbol one through symbol six color codes, but it doesn't really mean anything just by saying symbol because it can't, you can change these symbols to be anything that you like. So um, it just helps you to see that. Absolutely. If you want to, if you want to put the fat boy on your three minute chart, you can do that. No problem. I like to keep it separate in a window because a lot of times I'm changing the symbol and I don't want to take and change this symbol out all the time. I always keep it the same, but yes, you can put that on the same chart if you like. The S&P right now, uh, you can see it is overbought. And uh, the fat boy is telling us it's overbought and rolling over. We can see volume signatures coming in here, showing us that we see weakness coming in and the potential for that trade to reverse back down again. The big push up pushed us outside of this support resistance range. So that zone is broken. Um, I don't see any upside because I probably don't have enough data because it looks like we're going into new uh, local highs right now but we could pull that back out into a longer term chart and see what's coming in. But what we're seeing right now is we're starting to see that there's a push up weakness 
you see that the volume has gone white on the six minute. There's a push up and weakness. You can see there's a price extension with opposing volume coming in at the high. And we can also see that on our three minute. But I don't see it yet on my 60 minute. Uh, my zone just got knocked out. I got a wide bar that posted. So I'm expecting price to pull back down into this this same support resistance range. If this is a true break, then this level here will be tested. So I expect price to come back down, test that before it takes back off again. In my humble opinion. <laughs> but this is what I look for. So I am looking for a potential setup for this to go short. This is not a fail safe signal. You can see I got one right here too. Price did rally back down, looks like a five, six, seven bars. But what did it do? It failed. Okay. Price got to a certain point and failed to rotate. So um, you look for it to, to roll back up that way again. Um, if you are currently a Hawkeye user and a Hawkeye trader, then you have already seen and know how to use my uh, volume reversal strategy. So um, I encourage you to review the lessons on that because it is a very profitable trade strategy and you can use that uh, on any platform as well. Russell, let me pull up Russell for you then. All right, looks like we're, we're getting relatively the same information, although as we saw from the Russell, it's back down below fair value and it's not as bullish as the other markets. So we are seeing that information here. Price came up to the open, push up, big push down, push up, failed to rotate, pushed back down. So we're just in a trading range, which is exactly where the pre-market traded to. So we're trading around that range. We have a an high and a low setup so we need to see that these wide bars that are formed give us a direction to trade from. Once that direction is established, then we'll see how it's going to trade. The KISS is telling us that we are opening strong, but we are starting to show some weakness in the decline. So we're starting to see the advancing issues declining and the declining issues advancing, which means that there's, there's starting to become more declining issues on the overall market than we see advancers. So uh, the fat boy is also showing us that weakness is coming in because they become all overbought and they're starting to rotate down. And now we're seeing that uh, gold is starting to come back up and continue with strength. So this, uh, this, this failure uh, then becomes a potential for a weak weakness and we're, we would be looking for a trade to push us down. Uh, because of all of the support and resistance we have right through here in the pre-market, see that? Then the Hawkeye stop that you see on your 60 minute chart will be a great level to determine whether you want to take that trade or not. That's right about uh, a 154. So this 154 even, uh, 1540. I mean, yeah, 1540 right there. That would be a trigger point to make sure that you're in a trade that's going to confirm the downward direction. Now, if you're looking at the zones, then you can see that 1534.50 is the low side of this demand zone that's currently here. That is the line in the sand that Hawkeye says if you get a break below that, then we're expecting this market to continue down and our downside target then would be the next zone of opposite type, which would be the 1527 right there. And yet, yes, you can put these zones on any time frame chart. I just like to put them on my 60s because the 60 minute, I believe, is a, a zone magnet. I think the price uh, obeys and follows the zones on the 60 minute chart um, very, very well. And what it's telling me right now, since we have a nice series of demand zones coming up into the current price, 
this is a nice strong trend and that str strong trend uh, is well established so I'm looking for this to just stabilize at this point and then continue long unless that zone is broken if that zone is broken then we might start seeing a series of these support levels broken and a series of trailing supply zones resistance levels start to form off that 60 minute chart How do you hide the price bars on the fat boy? Oh, that's easy. If you right click on your data series, go to your chart style, I'm sorry, uh, go to your candle wick uh, and set them to transparent. That way you're just hiding them. They're there, they're just transparent. You're not going to see them overlaid. Chris, uh, can you put bond chart up? Uh, bonds, I think that's... Let's see, which one is the bond? Is that ZB? Yeah, I don't look at the bonds very often, but no, I think that is the bond. If you could confirm that for me, I would appreciate it. But uh, if this is, uh, if we're currently looking at that, then we can see some a lot of weakness coming in on the, off the bonds. Coming up into the open, the open push down, but now we're starting to see volume accumulation and pushing that back up into that range. We're starting to see a close over the trend dots and we're coming up into the resistance area. All four time frames are confirming a downtrend, but we need to see if price is going to push back up and to see that, that price direction. So for right now, we can see that was signaled and identified a continuation trend price pulled up to the res resistance area and came off hard you can see exactly how that price came up and then pushed back down again so right now neutral volume at an attractive price level but we have a wide bar we expect price to come back up to the center of that wide bar uh, before it continues down so we would be watching for that. So right now it looks like it's continuing in that direction. Yeah, TLT ETF is, is good for bonds. That's right. It is. Trade management. Okay, on Forex. All right, let me... Let me pull this back in. And uh, the Dow Jones, yep, yeah, um, that's the one I've got loaded right now. Um, we we did have a zone. We, we broke through a wide bar. We're pulling back into the center of that wide bar. So f always follow your wide bar rules. It's very important to trade that. But our three-minute gave us a nice extension. So we're watching and uh, waiting for this price to push us down into um, – at least three to five price bars in this direction. In this case, it closed below and is continuing to close below. So what we thought would be congestion now has become a trend down, but the Hawkeye trend dots are still green. Uh, the, the six minute and the 12 minute are still very green, but we've got volume really pushing down and uh, pushing us back down into prior uh, market open range right here. So watch for this region to be tested if price is going to continue back up again, then we need to see that test and fail. And then we would be expecting price to come back up. But watch the volume. Right now, we've got lower than average volume holding. And uh, we need it is responsive because you can see price is still continuing to fall, but the volume itself is not increasing. If this really was a good, a good move down, I would expect to see this volume rising. 
So if it's uh, starting to, to, to tail down as we get closer to this resistance area or this one right here, okay, then uh, you can see it's, it's probably going to fail and we would be looking for a potential reversal at that point. All right, uh, let's go over to Forex. Marcel wants us to look at uh, CAD Yen. She is currently in a profitable CAD Yen setup. Okay, where's the CAD Yen at? There it is. Nice. Yep, that was a, a really good, uh, a really good indication right here was one. And right here is two, two very good indications out of congestion that volume was going to go up. So it's really nice to be able to see those coming up into your trades. This is a five minute chart. Of course, you saw the same thing off of your six minute chart, 15 minute. Um, looks like you got the exact same thing off of your 30 minute. And you got the exact same thing off of your 60. So this confluence uh, is is highly is adds strength to the direction of your trade. All right, so if you're looking also at your longer time frame, if you're trading off the 15, a 45 minute fat man, showed that the Canadian, which is the yellow one right here, was extremely oversold. The yen right here was strong by comparison, but it's starting to roll over. So notice that 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 yen. Uh, is trending with strength and the trend of the Canadian is is weak so it's just starting to pull up from that weakness so the, the the strength we're starting to see in the CAD and the potential weakness that we have from an overbought yen is what we're starting to see in price right here So the 15 minute is, it hasn't given us an actual entry yet because it's still the trend is still white. Uh, the trend is still down on the 30 minute, uh, but the trend is up and looks like it's starting to continue on the 60 minute. We are coming into overhead resistance, so you might want to watch watch out for that because if this uh, fails at this level, uh, then that would be a, a high probability reversal for price to potentially come back down to the lower zone of opposite type right here but trade management if you're trading management i have my hawkeye levels on if you're trading a five minute chart then uh, wherever you enter your trade you apply your zone your levels to the chart and watch for your target levels to be hit ideally you want to set this up so that the hawkeye stop is about halfway between the stops and the entry point. So right here you can see that this price level is too close. That the stop itself is a little bit too close to price. It's not about halfway to the stop level. You can set this so that it is exactly the same as the Hawkeye stop. I think that's just a little bit too much risk. So I will format that. I'll go down to my levels indicator and I'm going to change my ATR profit factor to be a, I'll try 1.5 because that was a current one. And let's see if half an ATR extra is going to give me about halfway to the distance. Okay, not quite. You can see this is still just a little bit close. So I think I might want to go a full two in this case. So set my ATRs to two, put that on. You can see that's a great place. See, I'm, I'm about halfway from my entry point to my Hawkeye stop. And the resulting price fell well within that two ATR price range, which is a good setup. And then now I'm looking to see if I can't hit these target price levels based upon that. So a one to one would put me right here. A two to one would put me right here. And a three to one would put me at about 84. Okay, 
So, uh, you want to know a good place. You want to know a good place to get out. It's a carry trade, so a long-term hold. It's okay. Well, right now this uh, looks like a. This has to d tell me that it's going to fail first before I would start looking at getting out. It hasn't expanded enough to get to your profit targets. Um, we are in an overhead resistance and we are less than the previous high. We need to see price break that previous high in order to validate all of this bullishness coming in. Okay, so that 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 range needs to be continued. Now, if you were to look at the the downtrend, this breaks that downtrend, which is a good a good sign. But we need to see that volume is going to continue to support the move in that direction. And right now we're starting to see that that volume is failing right here and right here. So that volume looks to be failing at that point and but it might not be. Uh, it might it might roll around. We don't know yet. Because this is this this right here and this right here are really good signs that this rally long is going to continue. I put it on the wrong spot. Right there is where it should have been. There. Okay, Marcel. So far, it looks like it's still good. Um, it's it's at a testing point right now. This high needs to be broken in order to confirm the strength of that trend. The volume is already there. It's already telling us we've, we're 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 pushing in that. The, it's already changed its character. We already see that the longer term CAD is starting to strengthen, that the yen being overbought is starting to weaken. So this is, again, another good setup for what we want to do. So, so far this looks good. And uh, I would wait for at least for a, a level two to be hit if you're looking at uh, trying to take profits out. At, as a bare minimum, if you're just following this trade, the Hawkeye stops have almost got you to a break-even point anyway. So uh, as a minimum, you've already minimized risk in your trade because you've you've reduced the risk in the trade by your automatic trailing stop because it's closer than the regular stop is right now. You missed the bearish in the uh, Euro New Zealand spot bike he was waiting for it last night how can i tell a safe long-term place to get into that bearish move okay let's see let's see if we can't go to the what was it uh, euro new zealand yep 17 trend dots already bearish in that yeah these huge spikes that you see those are difficult to trade uh, absolutely um it's like it's news information. Price comes up into these zones and it just floors right out of them. But can you, could you have traded that? That's, that's always hard to tell whether you could trade these things uh, prior to the news coming in or not. Um, Hawkeye on the five minute had already gone short, but went full cons consolidation. Price pulled up to try to get the institutions into a much better trade. And then bam. Okay, so um, prior to that, we did see a bearish change of character here and here with the volume spikes and the volume radar signifying that sellers were coming into this market before and that when buyers tried to come back in, they could not match or compete with these volume spikes. They were competing and very bullish up to that point, but notice the change in character from this point on. Almost every volume bar that you see that comes in is, is high red, and the green ones that come in are just low and below average. So it's kind of telling you ahead of time. This, this might not have been tradable unless you were already sitting there waiting. <laughs> if you already had your, your sell signal 
set up as a break below this level here. It didn't matter where it went up. As long as it broke below, then you could have possibly participated in this move. Chances were good uh, that you probably didn't. How do you get into this trade afterwards? Well, this is a wide bar. You wait until that wide bar is broken and you trade the resulting downtrend if it breaks down or the uptrend if it breaks up. And in this case, it broke down right there. So you could have uh, taken and started participating in that trade. But uh, over time, using a five minute, you can see that there was uh, both corrective moves back up to the low. See that? That, that price bar is a significant price bar. So you use it to help you to see where support and resistance levels are. Failure to break up below that is another confirmation that uh, it's not going to rally past that point. We're starting to see volume come back in. Really good information that volume is coming in, but notice the magnitude of the volume bars coming here versus the magnitude of the volume bars back here. Okay, This one is still high. Sellers are still in firm control of this direction and this trend. So if you're taking any longs, only take them with very short profit targets. But if you're taking shorts, you can buy and hold the shorts in the, in the trade and continue to, to roll into those if, as they come in. So when you started to see signals to go short, notice the alignment occurred right there, right at the very beginning of that trend. The long trades didn't really do that, but the short side did. So that would be the point that you would be looking at trying to, to get short on that trade. Right there at the uh, alignment. These uh, the stop is a little bit close to the extended price. So this was this is a place where you could uh, lower your your ATR levels. And I have meant two to one, but let me take that to like a one point five to one. And uh, there you can see I've hit a level three on a one and a half ATR level. So with a one and a half ATR risk, I have been able to get uh, three ATR levels of profit already and continuing. Because all we're just barely even challenging the trend dot. So this trend is very strong and it's going to continue to go down. We are in a 60 minute support. Okay. But the, the longer term strength zone is right down just below that. Let me magnify that a little bit and see what that is. Yeah, it looks like it's a 165.45. Would be the down zone target, downside target. Uh, sorry that you missed it. But uh, that, yeah, that would have been a good trade. Huh? Here's here, This is another great trade to have entered if you followed your rules uh, and, uh, and entered uh, when the signal came. And that was just 9 o'clock this morning. Of course, that's just a five-minute chart. If you're trading the longer term, um, then it looks like you did get an entry signal right here. Nice volume stream up into that, uh, some clear indication, uh, that downside. So when this signaled here, you could have gotten in at that point off the 15 minute as well. Euro New Zealand, the Euro extremely weak. This elbow is a great indication that the price is going to continue to go down. So once you saw that turn, this was identifying weakness in the Euro and the New Zealand. Okay, where's the New Zealand at this blue line right here? At this point, the New Zealand was also trending weakness, but it was stronger than the Euro. So that means that uh, any, any downward trend that you saw would be preferential to any upward trend that you saw because the New Zealand is stronger than the Euro, so you're expecting a downtrend. VK, how to trade the three-step method, giving entries and fat boy 
of that symbol is in an overbought zone. Okay. So if the, if the fat boy is overbought, you're looking for a potential weakness to come in. So you're looking for a potential shorts in the direction of your trade. So to enter the three-step method, you're looking for your first, second, and third time frames to give you uh, confirming signals. And you trade it according to the direction that's given by your fat boy. I like to trade in the direction. So if I get a three-step entry signal, I want to confirm the filter with my fat boy to, to align with the direction of my trade. So if I'm trading the Dow and I get a signal here long, right here, three step is, this is a con confirming three step entry method right here. Then I need to verify that the, um, YM, that's this uh, blue, light blue one right here. I need to confirm that that light blue is trending up. Okay, it can be, it can be bottoming uh, or rounding but as long as it's not going down, then I can take that trade. You're not going to get a fat boy signal. Yeah, it's just going to be a confirming trend and it is lagging. So the, the data that you get from the fat boy itself is a lagging indication. It's kind of like relative strength or stochastics or value. If you interpret it properly, it can be, it can be a very nice leading indicator. Uh, the degree of correlation. Um, the, uh, th these right here are, are nicely correlated. They, they're all trending downward together. You can start, you're starting to see the S&P is rolling up. Then you start to see the others start to roll up just afterwards. So the S&P is leading the other markets and they are all are correlated very well. And then once it become overbought, it started to go back down, but notice the others started to peel off very quickly. Uh, especially the, the Russell, the Russell is starting to show the weakness much earlier than the other markets did. And now you can see that they are very decorrelated. So when the markets are decorrelated, they're starting to all pull up at the same time, which is a one measure of correlation. But because they're all spread out, you're expecting the market then to start going into a consolidation phase. And once that consolidation phase cancels, then it will come back in very tightly like you see here and start trending in the same direction again. So this just gives the markets the ability to do what they want to do until a real push through the market occurs. That, that usually means it's going to be range bound trading. The S&P does usually lead because it is the big boy. It is the highest volume traded and most volume comes across the S&P. So yes, it's usually the big boy and it usually leads the market. Occasionally you will see the uh, NASDAQ lead. Occasionally you will see the Dow lead, but most of the time you will see the S&P lead. Okay, that about does it for me today. You guys have been very attentive and asked some very good questions. I hope this was helpful and inquisitive. For those of you who are here for the very first time, if you really are interested in getting started with Hawkeye, then I have a very special offer to make you right now uh, to purchase the Hawkeye Volume Starter Package for Ninja Trader. I'll put that right here in the chat box. If you see that, then you can click on the link and go to a page that allows you to take $400 off of our Volume Indicator. Let me show you exactly what you would get for that. All right, here is the uh, Hawkeye charts with the volume starter package applied. Here you can see the Hawkeye volume, which is the one we've been looking at all morning long. That tells you everything you need to know. 
The volume shows you buying volume and pressure, selling volume, red, and neutral, which is white. Uh, all the other indicators out there don't really show you a volume spread analysis of the chart. So this is a really great way of color coding volume spread analysis into a single indicator. We also include the uh, volume radar, which is showing high probability volume signals. These are extremely strong or weak volume bars that we point out to you because you need to pay attention to what these bars are doing and what price is doing in relation to those bars. Okay, that's very key. And then the color of the bars you can see are painted the exact same color as the volume. So that's the volume paint bar. It's the easiest way to be able to identify and see the relationship between volume and prices when they're color coded together. And so when you see volume selling at the highs, so if you're looking at red tops or green bottoms, then those are really good indications of the direction and the intent of the market and what it's going to do. Then you've got the pivots and the wide bars. The pivots are the small little dots that you see on top and bottom. See these? Those identify isolated highs and lows in the market, which are key reversal indications as well. You expect to see price reverse from a, a pivot three to five price bars. They also are very good at helping you to draw consolidation and trend lines. And the last but not least is the wide bar. The Hawkeye wide bar are the purple bars that you see identified here on the chart. The purple bars are wide bars where we see uh, uh, exceptional price action uh, activity. And so we paint them because we can see there's a high probability that following a wide bar price will re either retrace into the body of the wide bar or it will confirm a breakout. So the wide bar is an extremely valuable tool. Those are the five indicators that you get with the volume starter package and it gets you started and on the road to integrating and learning about volume spread analysis and volume price analysis. If you understand it from what, the way we teach it, then you're going to have a significant edge in the market and uh, a significant advantage on, on developing a successful trading plan. Okay. Well, good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording at this point.